Are you incredibly lazy and don't want to deal with upgrading all of the programs you're using in the 20 different package managers on your system? Well, luckily, there is a much easier way to do this. That way is by using today's application, Topgrade. What is it going to do? Well, it's going to go and run through pretty much most of the common package managers and automatically do all those updates for you. Now, obviously, some cases it is going to prompt you for your password, but it's going to go and do those updates for you. You don't have to worry about, oh, I want to upgrade Pac-Man, and I want to do Cargo, and I want to do Pip, and Gems, or Ruby, whatever the Ruby one is called. You don't want to do NPM, and all of the other things you have available. I heard about this project a while back when it first came out, but I didn't want to cover it back then because it just didn't have that many package managers supported. I believe it supported like Pac-Man and Apt and like a couple of the things like NPM and things like that. But nowadays you can run it on pretty much any Linux distro that actually matters. And you can even run it on Windows and a lot of the other package managers outside of things like pip and things like that are supported as well. Things like the ZSH package managers, there's support for the Vim package managers, there's support for updating Flutter, updating your R packages, and countless other things. I don't know if it's every single one of the common package managers, but it certainly looks like it. But I'll get to why it doesn't matter if some of them aren't supported a little bit later. So once it's done all of the updating of one thing, it's going to go into the next step, in this case being the AUR. But if at any point you want to go and stop the updating actually happening, obviously keep in mind that if you do cancel one of the package managers, then if that package manager doesn't have a way to properly cancel, you are going to have problems. But... In the case of something like this, it's perfectly fine to cancel here. We can just go and press Control C, and then it will prompt us to go and either retry the operation or just quit out of the application entirely. In this case, I'm going to press Q and then just quit out. But it even offers to update things which you wouldn't necessarily consider to be a package manager, things like updating your Git repos. Now, this feature should not be in the application the way it works. I don't know how to disable this, okay? I have not told it that it should go and pull the repo slash dot files. It has just decided itself that it wants to try to pull that. That can be an issue in a lot of cases. You can go and explicitly say, I want to go and pull from this repo and that repo and this other repo, and that's perfectly fine. This is what it's saying right here, saying that these places don't actually contain repos. This one... I did not set and I cannot disable it. So I'd recommend if you're using this application, disabling the Git repos functionality because this can be a serious problem. Once it gets through all of the updates, it's going to tell you what's failed, what's succeeded. It doesn't tell you why some of the things failed though. So some of these failed like this one here and this one here failed because I explicitly cancelled out of them. This one here though failed because it couldn't actually find a package manager for NeoVim. Those are different kinds of fails and probably should be marked in different kinds of ways. I also have absolutely no idea what Micro is. That's probably from some like random project that I did a video on months ago or maybe planned to do a video on and just never got rid of it. There's a lot of things on my system that fit exactly that description. And then in the case of using Pac-Man, it's going to have backup files for everything that may have been modified, even in cases where some of the things weren't actually changed. Things like my sudo is file. I don't actually use sudo on my system. I don't even have it installed. So obviously that couldn't have been modified, but maybe some of it did. So it's just better to have a backup regardless. And if you need to roll back, then you absolutely can. Now, before you even think of running this application, the absolute first thing you should do is go into the config file and go and disable things that you do not want to run because by default, it's going to run through every single thing it can find. So maybe you don't want, uh, npm being handled for example well make sure you disable that otherwise it is going to be updated 
So there are two main things you should mess with. Those being disable and only. So disable is going to disable certain options, but still run everything else. So in this case, I don't want to see the Git repos run, but I'm happy for all of the other things to try to be updated. But maybe you don't want it to be like that. Maybe you instead only want specific things to be run. For example, you only want things like the system and let's say pip, for example, so pip3, and that's all you want to run, nothing else. Now, you might be wondering how do you actually find the values for what actually goes in here, because it's not actually going to be the name of the package manager itself, even though that would be far more convenient, just having, instead of it be system and that being a generic thing, have it be pacman and then apt and then dnf and whatever else you're using on your specific distro. So the way you find those values, they're not on the GitHub unless they've been added since I recorded this. The best way to do it is by doing top grade dash H and then under these options here, it will list out everything that is available. Now, because these values are exactly the same for both options, a slight reading optimization that could be made is not listing all of them out twice, instead just having one list and saying that both these options relate to that list. But it's not a big problem, it's just a lot of stuff taking up the screen. Now, the default config file for the most part is fairly good, but I've noticed that some of the config options weren't actually right. So I think what happened is the config file that was shipping with the application was for an older version of the application, and some of the option names had been changed over time. For example, in the only and disable lists, git repos used to just be called git, and also pull predefined used to be called predefined repos. And these are commented out by default, but when you go and uncomment them, you'll notice that the application then no longer works. Luckily, it does give you a fairly useful error message telling you what you could do instead. This is a fairly simple thing to fix and may not be present when you go and test the application yourself. I didn't have an older version of the config file available, so it's not like I tested it back when it first came out. I'm really not sure how that had actually managed to happen. Earlier I mentioned it doesn't actually matter if Topgrade doesn't support a package manager you want to use. The reason why I said that is because Topgrade actually supports adding in custom commands. Now, there's two ways to do this and only one of them seems to actually work. So there are pre-commands and also commands. Now, the way that I understand it, because there's no documentation on how this actually works, not in the application and not on the GitHub page either, commands are supposed to be something you can add into these lists here and then it will run through them as you actually go. But adding in one of the commands to this list doesn't actually work. Pre-commands, on the other hand, are supposed to be there for doing various forms of setup. Maybe you want to go and prepare an environment before you actually do any of the other commands, but they can also just be used to add in extra things you want to support, and pre-commands just automatically run. In this case, I've just got a simple test or example command, whatever you want to call it, where all I'm doing is running ls, and before everything else happens, it's going to run ls, and then in this case, it's going to try to do a system update and run the rest of the commands you need to have. But you could use this for something more sensible, like maybe writing your own git updater, or maybe you have your own custom package manager to do various things. Maybe you wrote your own dot file management program that uses git and various other things, and you want to go and run it here. All of those things can be done in here by just running a command. Now, this right here is a really great example of how weirdly designed some parts of the application are. So for Arch Linux, it's got a section called Arch Package Manager. By default, obviously, it's set to Pac-Man, but you could go and set this to Trizen, Peru, Yay. You could probably go and set it to something else, and it will work just fine. But then the section for the commands is split up across multiple things. So you've got Yay arguments, but Yay arguments is for Yay or Peru, they don't share all of the same arguments. Peru actually has some extra arguments that aren't in Yay, and then there's a separate one for Trizen as well. Why is there not just a single thing for Arch Linux package manager options? Weird design choices aside, I wanted to save the weirdest feature for the end. So you might have noticed a couple of things in here relating to like SSH or remote machines. So if you have other machines on your network that have top grade installed, 
let's say you have your desktop, a laptop, and a Raspberry Pi, for example. You can actually run top grade from one of those systems, and then it will go and automatically run top grade on all of the other systems on your network. Obviously, keeping in mind that they actually have top grade installed. Now, I think this is a very convenient feature. I really do. But it has a couple of problems. Firstly, it's very likely there's going to be an admin prompt or a pseudo prompt on one of those machines, and you're going to have to go to it anyway, so automatically running top grade doesn't actually save you any time. Also, in cases where it does automatically run, you may need to go and actually be there to make sure if anything does go wrong with upgrading with one of those patch managers that you know to fix it and you know there's actually a problem. Otherwise, you can just go about your day not realizing there's any problem whatsoever. And then when the problem actually does arise, you have no idea why the problem's actually happening. Now, if after all your configuration is done, you're not really sure what's actually going to be run. I would recommend running the application with the dash N option. This is going to be a dry run. This is just going to print out what actually would have been run. In my case, it's just going to do a system update, pip3, and also run that pre-command, which would have run ls. It might help you realize that there was a package manager installed that you completely forgot about and had no idea this would actually try to update. Now, I know there's going to be a bunch of arguments in my comment section about why you shouldn't use this if you want to maintain, you know, system integrity and be sure about every single thing that's going to be run. And that is a perfectly valid complaint, in which case this application is not made for you. This application is made for people who want a very convenient setup where they can just run one command, they can walk away, go make a cup of coffee or whatever they do in the morning, have their system be completely updated, come back to it and everything is just done. They don't need to worry about, oh, this package manager or that package manager. It's all just done by one program and it saves actually quite a bit of time. I do think it still needs a bit of work, especially in the case of documentation, especially in some cases where it's not entirely clear what some of those package managers actually might be linking to. It probably would be a better idea to have, you know, on that list of supported features on the website, also what their option is in the application as well, just in case it's not entirely clear by what the name is. For example, with system. System, I know, because it's one of the default options, is the generic name for the system package manager, but there's no package manager called system, and I can get why someone new to the application might be confused about that, especially when you run the application, the values that it shows above each section don't line up with the options in the config file. However, if you don't like the application in the state that it's currently in, I don't think the concept itself is completely flawed. It wouldn't be very difficult to go and write like a Python script or a Bash script or whatever language you like to use to go and do basically the exact same thing yourself and just use the package managers that you want to use rather than using, I didn't mention this, this is a Rust application to go and do all of the exact same stuff. I like the idea of top grade and I think once it gets better, I could happily recommend it to more people. As it currently stands though, Unless you're willing to fumble around the documentation, I would probably recommend avoiding it at least for now. But a lot of the problems I had were very minor issues. So that's going to be pretty much it for me. Let me know in the comment section down below what you think of this project and if it's something that you're ever going to consider actually using. And if you like this video and you want to support the channel and become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe to Sally Berape, all linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over Tea available basically anywhere. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robinson Plays where I usually live stream twice a week, upload Father's YouTube shorts, and this channel is also available over on Odyssey. That's going to be it for me, and I'm out.